Well, hello, scrappers, and welcome back to my channel. All right, today is the day I refine this gold. Now, this uh, is the gold I got in my uh, year end weigh in um, of gold. So, this is the gold I had not yet processed it fully and melted down. I like to process my gold at least three times using different precipitating agents to get very clean gold that way because different precipitating agents. Uh, will bring down different things like SMB will bring down gold and um, platinum group metals but other precipitating agents will only bring down the gold so I like to refine it three times make sure it's good and clean before I melt it down get good 24 karat bars Okay, so I've got 30.51 grams of dirty gold in here. Now, some of it's been only been uh, precipitated out of solution once. Some of it's been precipitated out of solution twice. Uh, those solutions are pretty dirty. I'm just going to reprocess this, the whole thing two more times and then melt it down and make uh, little bars out of it. So, got almost a troy ounce of gold here in powder form. There we go. Put it in this beaker, and let me get my little paintbrush out and make sure I get it all out of here and into the beaker. Don't want to miss any, and I'm working indoors here because it's very windy outside, and I don't want any of this powder to go anywhere. Let me get it out of the cap. Anything that's stuck in the cap. All right. So let me get this in the fume hood. We'll get some aqua regia on it, and we'll get started dissolving it so we can refine it. Okay, let's make some aqua regia and dissolve this dirty gold. Now, by dirty I mean there's, well there's some trash in it I'm sure. Some, uh, just some solid debris that doesn't belong there. Um, a bit, about 400 milliliters. Um, I'm sure there's some uh, platinum group metals. It's funny when you call platinum dirt, but yeah. Platinum group metals. Um, probably some base metals. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some copper in there. Maybe a little zinc. Maybe a few other things. Put a little heat to this. Not too much. Lit it up. Some of the gold powder's floating. Probably a little bit of oil contaminating it. But that won't last long once we start cooking this stuff. The nitric acid, it'll oxidize everything in there. There's about two milliliters of nitric acid. I put three in because I need to walk away from this and do something. And I don't want to put too much in and have it go off like a volcano once it warms up a little bit. So, I'll just put more acid in as needed to get all that stuff to dissolve. Once we get it in solution, we'll filter it really good to get rid of all that debris that doesn't belong there and drop cleaner gold out of it. And then, we'll do it again and we'll use a different precipitating agent. It's been maybe 15 minutes. Um, had to had to do something and I need to do something else here so maybe you know it's the best time to start this project so I need to keep walking away from it but we've got a got a good reaction going uh, the heat's pretty low so I don't think it's gonna like erupt and boil over on me I will check it as often as I can and uh, I suspect there's probably not enough nitric acid in there to get all that gold into solution so it will probably need more but uh, I'm going to let it cook for now and go take care of something important. Alright, well I'm back. It's been maybe half an hour. The reaction has stopped. But there's a lot of gold left on the bottom of the beaker. So I'm going to put some more nitric acid in. But I'm going to be real conservative. Because it's hot. And that gold is finely divided. There could easily be a boil over. Runaway reaction. So... Dribble it in real slow here. Yeah, 
that. I don't know if that's showing up on the on the video or not, but yep, we got a reaction starting up. nitric acid really slowly to this until all of the gold looks like it's gone into solution I would be surprised if there's some uh, stuff down there that won't go in some dirt some crud I'm also going to move this back to this corner of the corningware dish so just in case it ever does boil over it'll run out the um, lip of the beaker here and down into the dish if it was over here and it boiled over it could run off into my fume hood. That's a lot harder to clean up. But if the ditch catches it, hey, all my gold's right there. That's one reason I use these corningware dishes. They catch boil over, spills, sloppiness, and it's easy to just mop up and start over again. Okay, it's been a little while longer. The reaction has died down. There's still a lot of gold on the bottom of the beaker, so we'll put some more, some more nitric acid in. I put about a milliliter and a half in the last time. Put in that much or a little more this time. And you know, as soon as this goes in, I see bubbles start coming up, so. Got a pretty vigorous reaction going on. Just let let that go. See what it gets us. And I will probably just keep adding nitric acid until it looks like all the gold that's going to go into this solution has gone in. I'm going to assume anything left on the bottom that won't dissolve isn't gold, and uh, I'll just filter it out when I clear up the liquid. So. I know it's about as exciting as watching paint dry here to watch me uh, slowly add the uh, nitric acid in. Hey, if it wasn't gold, it would be about that boring, but it does involve gold, so a little bit of excitement there. So, probably be back when uh, all this stuff's in solution. All right. Everything that is going to dissolve has dissolved. There's some crud left in the bottom, but it looks just like crud to me, not like gold. So, heat's off. I am pretty sure I have probably overnoxed this. I think my last addition may have been a little bit too, too much, but that's okay. Got my usual saturated solution of sulfamic acid here. We will uh, denox this. Oh yeah, there's some uh, excess nitric acid in there, but not for long. This will destroy it, and as a byproduct, it will produce some sulfuric acid, which will take any uh, lead in there out as lead sulfate, so that's nice. Okay, that's working good. We're also deleting, diluting it a little bit, which needs to be done too. Alright, let me wash the rest of this sulfamic acid in here. We will call that denoxed. I gotta get some ice on it, cool it down and further dilute it, then we can filter it and drop the gold. Okay, let me take this stuff off of the still warm hot plate, put it on this cold plate over here which hasn't been on. And then we'll put some ice to it. Alrighty, let that ice melt and we'll be able to filter that and drop the gold. Okay, it's been a while. The ice has melted 
And I'll tell you what, some more crud has come out of solution and is laying on the bottom of the beaker. There's a lot more crud on the bottom of the beaker than was there before. So that's good. That was exactly what the uh, ice treatment was supposed to do. Lowering the temperature and diluting the liquid allows some of the low solubility stuff in there to come out of solution. So that's great. So now we've got an even cleaner gold that way. So let me get this filtered and we'll filter all that crud out and we should have a nice clean filtrate ready for dropping our gold. A lot of gold went in this beaker. I'd like to get it back. So I'm using my small filtration funnel, so this is going to take a little while. So we'll probably be back when it is done, so you don't have to watch the whole process. All right. Okay. Oop, got a little bit of a drop on the outside of the beaker here. You don't escape that easy. You get in there with your friends. A fairly concentrated solution of gold here, so every little drop counts. In fact, uh, there was one drop that was trying to escape down the side of the funnel here. I caught it with a little bit of a uh, paper towel. I'm going to put this in with my uh, filter paper storage so that this gets processed. No losses. No losses at all. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let the last of the liquid go through and then I'm going to with distilled water, wash the yellow color out of the filter. And that'll take a few minutes, I'm sure, to get all the yellow color out of the filter and down in here. And then we'll move on from there. All right, filtration is complete. I've washed the color out of the filter. One more little thing I need to do. I see some yellow drops on the base of the funnel down here. Let me get them in. Again, like I said, you know, no, no losses, no waste, nothing gets away. Okay. So here's our filtered solution, very clean, very clear. I'm going to put it in this two-liter beaker. I know it came out of a one-liter beaker, but we're going to put it in a two-liter beaker because of how I'm going to drop the gold this time. Not going to use SMB this time. Going to do something different. The way to get really pure gold, or one of the ways, there are several ways, is to uh, use different precipitating agents. Now SMB works pretty good for dropping gold out of solution. Unfortunately, it will also drop other stuff out of solution too. Um, what, if you've got platinum group metals contaminating your gold, they'll come out of solution too. And I'm not 100% certain, but I think it'll drop other stuff as well. Now, there are several precipitating agents that will only drop the gold and leave everything else in solution. We're going to use one of those. We're going to use copperus, also known as iron sulfate. So, I did this in a previous video. Um, I brought up CM Hoke's book on the computer, and we looked where she talks about the amount of copperus to use and she uses some um, older weights she uses you know pounds and penny weights which i just don't think and i can't get wrap my head around so i did some math and i'll, I'll link to that video where I, I did the conversions and uh so i did some math and i came up with uh like 5.8 grams of copper per gram of gold you want to precipitate well we've got 30.51 grams of gold in here. A little less now because we've gotten a lot of the impurities out. But still, we'll call it 30.51 grams. So, and then I also increased the amount of copper used by about 20% just to account for any errors in measurement, any uh, inadequate uh, denoxing, anything like that. So I always add about 20%. So we're talking uh, more like seven grams of copper per gram of of gold you want to uh, recover from your solution. So we're talking uh, 
let's see, 5.83 grams of copperus per gram of gold times 1.2. We're going to need about 21, 214 grams, 214 grams of copperus to uh, precipitate this gold, okay? So let me set this gold aside, get it out of the way, and we'll weigh out some copperus. Okay, put that on there, start her up. So 214 grams, roughly. I mean, you don't have to be real anal about it. In the ballpark. And of course I'm outside, and of course it's windy, so this is probably going to bounce around a little bit. Uh-oh. Huh. Well, I've never noticed that before. My, uh, my scale won't go above 200 grams. Okay. I did not realize that was the limit. Well, it looked like we were creeping right up on 200 grams. I'll put a little bit more in and we'll call that 214 grams, okay? Like I said, you don't have to be anal about it. Okay. So let's get this dissolved in some hot water. Okay, so I've got my copperus here. Now all I need is some hot water to dissolve it in. Oh look, there's some hot water. Already prepared. It's like one of those cooking shows, you know, where uh, they'll put the casserole in the oven and immediately pull another one out. So here's what I prepared earlier. Yeah, so uh, We'll get this copperus dissolved in here, at least as much of it as it as will dissolve. It's about 800 milliliters of water here. It's probably a little more water than I need. But uh, we'll get it dissolved. And the thing about copperus or, or iron sulfite, sulfate, it's a fertilizer that you can buy at, you know, any home center store, hardware store, or garden center, or whatever. It's not very clean. I mean, it's meant to be put in the dirt on plants, so they don't make it, you know, very clean. There's a lot of stuff in here that's not going to dissolve. Um, I think they make this stuff by um, treating um, iron filings and turnings with sulfuric acid. And there's some, there's going to be some iron filings and turnings left in here that you're going to need to filter out. And there's just other miscellaneous crud. Who knows what it is, actually. We're going to have to clean this up before we use it to drop our gold. But we're going to have to do something else to it, too. Because it's the wrong color. It's brown. It needs to be green. So to turn it green, we're going to acidify it with a little muriatic acid. And it shouldn't take too much. We'll put a little acid in here. Just gonna eyeball it. Look at that color change almost immediate. Give it a little stir. And there we go. I hope that's showing up. We now have green copperous solution, which is what we want. Okay. Now I've got to filter this stuff before we can use it to drop our gold and get all of the crud out of it that's not going to dissolve. So I'll get set up to filter this. Okay, let me get this copper solution filtered. Get all that insoluble crud out of it. So if you're trying to do what I'm doing here, Recovering gold from waste, refining it, whatnot. And you don't have CM Hoax book, you're kind of reinventing the wheel constantly. And you're going to run up against enough problems doing this, you know, you're going to end up reinventing the wheel a lot anyway. You don't need that extra, extra um, stress in your life. I would recommend getting her book and reading it. It's, it's kind of the Bible. And I will put uh, I will put a link in the description of this video to where you can get it. 
Yeah, there's going to be enough reinventing the wheel as it is. I mean, uh, look at my series on running a copper refining cell and refining the uh, anode slimes. There's a lot of unknowns there, stuff I still don't quite understand. Okay, going to let this drain through, and then we will move on to dropping the gold. Okay, before we move on, I'll just give you a quick peek in the filter. This is why you filter your coppers before you use it to drop your gold. We just we just cleaned up that gold solution, and we don't want to introduce all this stuff into it and make it dirty again. So yeah, got to filter your coppers. Okay, between these two solutions, I've got a little more liquid here than I was planning on. So it might all fit in a 2-liter beaker, but I'm going to put it in my 3-liter beaker just to have a little breathing space. Don't have to worry about overtopping. So let me get the gold solution in here. Every last little bit of it. Okay. And now, let me uh, zoom in and we can watch the fun. Put the copperous, the filtered copperous solution in with the gold, and we'll see what happens. Uh huh. Looks like a reaction to me. Yes, indeed. I would say we have a reaction. Oh, wow. I don't know if that's showing up. All the gold floating on the surface. Yeah, look at all that. Floating dendritic gold. Nice. So that's just a tiny fraction of it. A lot of it's settling to the bottom already. There's a couple things I like about using copperus. Um, it's quick. You know, it's, it's, there's, there's no doubt that you've got a reaction here. Sometimes you put the uh, SMB in and nothing happens. And you wonder if you put enough in. You wondered if you'd uh, denoxed enough, whatnot. And then the reaction happens, or it doesn't, and you wind up having to either put more in or denox more or whatever. Copperous, it's instant. There's no nasty fumes with copperous either. If I was doing this as SMB, I'd need to do it in the fume hood because there would be sulfur dioxide boiling out of this stuff like crazy and it would be choking me to death. No nasty fumes at all. And it's just dropping the gold. Everything else is staying in solution, which I like a lot too. The cleanup. Getting the residual brown stuff out of the gold, which I believe is uh, ferric chloride. That's a little tough. So the cleanup, there's a little more cleanup when you use copper. So let me see if I can get this floaty gold to sink. I'm breaking the surface tension here. So there's a little more cleanup to it. But in the end, we're going to have very clean gold. So that's a beautiful thing. Let's see here. Uh, because the liquid gets so dark, it's hard to see the gold settling on the bottom, but I'm sure it is. I have no doubts. So I'm just going to let this set this aside. Put a lid on it to keep it clean and set this aside and we'll let it settle and then we'll deal with it after a while. Okay, I don't know how well that is showing up on video. It doesn't look so good on the viewfinder, but boy that is clearing from the top down fast. It's only been a few minutes long enough for me to clean up the dirty glassware and put it away and already it is clearing up. The gold is settled. There's a nice layer on the bottom. That's a beautiful thing. Another thing I like about the copper is the gold settles quick. It doesn't linger. All right, but I'm going to let it settle a little while longer, go get some lunch, come back out, then we'll start dealing with this stuff. Okay, I went inside, had a quick lunch, came back out. I haven't been gone that long. This looks like it is completely settled. The liquid looks very clear, just sort of a brownish, but very clear. Um, nice layer of gold on the bottom. I think the reason that um, with copperus the gold settles so quickly and with SMB sometimes it takes a while 
is because of all the gas production when you put SMB into the liquid. It produces sulfur dioxide gas, which is not only toxic, it also, I think the bubbles of sulfur dioxide buoy up the small bits of gold in the, in the solution, the, the microparticles of gold, and it just takes a long time for it to settle. So, but there's no gas production with copperus. The gold just falls right out of the solution. It's 19 times heavier than water, although probably not quite 19 times heavier than whatever this solution is now. So, uh, but it, it settles out of solution pretty darn quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cleaning this up. And the first step is, as usual, I'm going to siphon off the bulk of the liquid. And then I'll transfer the gold to a smaller beaker. And we'll start giving it some washes to clean it up. All right, let me get this stuff siphoned. Get the bulk of the liquid off of it. Man, I do a lot of siphoning. Yeah. Price of gas these days, I ought to be siphoning gas out of people's tanks. Oh well, gold's more lucrative. Okay, so this is going to take a little while. Got the better part of two liters of liquid here, so we'll just siphon this and be back when it's done. Alright, here's the gold. After siphoning the vast bulk of the liquid off, that is some good looking stuff, let me tell you. The color is just gorgeous. It always is when it comes out of copperus. Alright, I'm going to transfer this to a smaller beaker and start giving it some hot water washes to get uh, the, the remaining copperus out of it. Clean it up. <clears throat> so, I'm sure I've said this before, but it's probably worth saying again. Whenever I precipitate gold from solution in a beaker, I always take a little piece of paper towel and I wipe down the inside of the beaker. Because, you know, I, I spritzed this as good as I could with my water spray bottle to try and get all the gold out of here. But there's always seems to be a little bit of gold that just sticks to the walls and the bottom of the beaker. A fine film. You don't even see it if you don't look for it sometimes. And I don't know if it's because my beakers are a little scratched up, a little bit rough on the inside or what. But, uh, yeah. Some gold sticks to them. So I always do this. Get that gold. I'm going to put this with my filter paper storage. I'll get that gold back when I process the papers. So, top tip for not losing any gold. Here's all the gold been transferred to this smaller beaker. Um, see, it's got a little bit of a yellow color to it. So that's the leftover copper, so I need to wash that out, and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so here's my uh, rinsing setup. I'm going to pour this yellow liquid off through this funnel, which has a filter in it. So any gold that comes over with the liquid, I'll catch it on the filter and process that in the future. Again, you know, no losses. That's my that's my motto. I try not I try hard not to lose anything. I got a plan for catching every little crumb of gold. Okay. So now I'm going to put some hot water on this stuff. Agitate it. And then once this fil once this funnel empties, I'm going to pour this liquid off through there. See, it's a lot less yellow now. But there's still some yellow color. And I'm going to keep this up until I don't see any more yellow. And then I'm going to keep it up a while longer. And get this gold good and clean. Make sure I get all of that iron out of the gold. Boy, that is looking good. Like good gold, though. That, that just agglomerates together nice. Stays together in one big mass. That is beautiful stuff. The color is gorgeous. Got some clean gold there. Okay, this is the fifth hot water rinse. And I still see a trace of the yellow in there. So, this is going to take a while. It always does. It's one of my main complaints about working with copperus. It's got so many pluses, but the clean up at the end. That's really a minus. Okay, let that drain. 
and I'll keep giving it rinses until I'm happy with it. Okay, I've kind of lost count of my washes. Eight, nine, not sure. I'm pretty happy with the way that looks now. I don't really see any more trace of color. Didn't really see any in the last wash either. Um, so I'm going to drain this liquid off. And I've been washing it in um, hot tap water. I'm going to give it a final wash or two in distilled water before we move on. Okay, just to get any of the minerals of the tap water out of there. We don't want those to carry over into the next process.